Hey there, welcome back to another video in our CCNA series and in this video we are going to discuss about how you can actually uh, manage Cisco switch. So we are going to talk about managing Cisco switch. Now there are several options that are available in order to manage your Cisco switch and managing means actually how you can secure the CLI access from not letting unauthorized user access the CLI and do some changes on your switch. Because as we discussed, the major uh, purpose of accessing CLI is to do all kind of configuration. And we discussed about three modes. You, you have user mode, then you have enable mode, and then you have a global configuration mode. Correct, and we also did discuss about how you can configure passwords in order to secure your user mode and enable mode. So for user mode, we had a console password. And for enable mode, we, we had an enable password, of course. So a user who wants to reach out to the global config needs to enter these two passwords. Correct, and then and then only he, he or she will be able to grab the access of the CLI, I would say. Okay, so you can say that if you have to reach out to the user mode, then you can connect to the user mode by either using, uh, you could say, a PC with a feature called Telnet okay or you can reach out to the user mode or you can reach out to the user mode of the switch by using the console port and you have as you have these two options available you could either use telnet which would give you the remote access uh, to reach out to the cli of the switch or you can use a console port in order to physically reach out to the switch uh, by using a console cable and getting connected with the console port of the switch physically but in order to be able to configure uh, the cli of the switch by using either the remote options which which can be either a telnet connection or an ssh connection to be to be secured uh, you need to configure uh, an ip address that you can connect with by using telnet or ssh and as we already have mentioned that user mode or, or you could say uh, the switch doesn't really work with the IP address. It doesn't understand the concept of IP address. So for, for because if you go into the interface of switches, then you will not be able to configure IP address directly on the switch. So you need to create uh, an interface which is called as switched virtual interface. And we call it as SVI. This is kind of a virtual interface that you will create for a VLAN, okay, for the default VLAN and you will be able to configure IP address on this interface. And then by using the same IP address, you can reach out to the CLI of the, uh, of the switch by using any PC, any remote managed PC, okay, to, in order to remotely configure the switch. All right, so we already have discussed about how this uh, enable and you could say console password can be configured and I'll dem demonstrate to you again and we will also configure the uh, switch by using a remote management protocol which, which can be telnet. So I'll just clear the window for you <clears throat> and then we'll, we'll grab a switch over here and it will be the same switch that we had in our previous configurations. So it will be a 2960 series switch and then I'll just get a PC so that we can use that PC in order to remotely manage the switch. So I'll just I'll just use a normal cable in order to connect with the switch and you see this this is on. So I will just use an IP address on the PC itself and I will configure the PC with 192.168.1.1 with the default subnet mask of slash 24 on the PC. And then if we talk about getting the CLI access, right now it doesn't ask for any of the password. You see, as, as soon as I hit the return buttons or enter button again and again, it takes me directly to the user mode. So to not be able to reach out to the user mode without using the password, you just need to go to the enable mode and then go to the configure terminal and jump in to the line console zero window. 
okay and over here you can just configure the password by using the password command and you can use any password let's just just go one and then you you need to hit the login command and by using these set of commands you can you, you simply get able to configure the console password so when i hit exit command for a couple of times and again got, got exit oh that's that's well, that's what takes us to the user mode so as i hit enter over here it asks me for the password and that's how you can configure the console password and i'll hit cisco one just type it over there it won't show you that what password you are typing but that can just take you into the user mode And then we can again configure uh, another password which can be used in order to go to enable mode as it doesn't ask for any password over here. But the command can be as simple as go to the configure terminal mode and just hit enable and then you can use two sort of passwords over here. You can, you can use a plain password okay and then you can use a secret password which will basically store the key or the phrase that you will be using as a password into an encrypted way or a hashed way. So we'll just go with the normal password as of now and we'll hit enable password and we'll configure Cisco 2 over here. And if I hit exit and exit again, you see that's that's gonna be our console password, our very first password and that's Cisco 1. And then as I hit enable command, it again asks me for a password which is uh, an enable password. So that's gonna be Cisco 2 and that takes us to the enable mode. Then you can go to the configure terminal so that's that's our two of the password okay and you can verify the the passwords in by checking uh, the running configuration that is currently present onto the switch by running a command called show running config so if you if you check the configuration uh, or the running configuration it shows you that the host name it, it shows you all the configuration that the switch has as of now so it shows you that the host name is switch and enable password is cisco2 and uh, if you if you scroll down by hitting the space bars you can you can also check that the uh, console password is cisco1 so what you can do as your enable password is being prompted in a plain text manner you can use other password as well uh, called enable secret and if you want to configure that we'll just check what the differences might seem like so we'll just configure enable secret and then you can you can uh, just type your password as cisco3 and as we hit enter now the secret password kind of overrides the plain password so if you have both passwords configured then the one that will be prompted to you would be the secret password so first enter the console password and then go to the enable mode typing down the enable secret that's cisco3 and if you want to check the running config again then you will be able to see that enable password is Cisco 2 but the secret password is not shown into plain text. So that just kind of adds an extra layer of security to, towards your running configuration file that is present on the switch. So this is, this is what we talked about when you, when you have the access of the CLI physically. But what if you want to remotely access the, the CLI of the switch? Like you, you're not reachable uh, physically on the switch and you are somewhere else uh, uh, which is not nearby the physical switch and you want to still configure the switch over there. So if you go uh, towards the IP address and if, we, if you jump into any physical IP address let's say go to configure terminal mode and then go to the interface FA0 slash 1 that's our very first interface. So you cannot configure you see the IP address command I'm, I'm trying to press the tab button in order to auto complete the command and it says the command is not recognized. So the IP address command which is generally used in order to configure the IP address on interfaces will not work over here because switches doesn't support IP addresses it's, it's layer 2 device. So that's why we need to create a switched virtual interface SVI that, that I just uh, uh, like described you in the very beginning of this video. So in order to create the SVI, you'll be using a command called interface VLAN1. 
and VLAN one is basically the default VLAN that is present over there and don't worry if you do not know anything about VLAN because we are going to talk about VLAN in a deeper manner in upcoming sections of this video or, or some other video. So you could go to interface VLAN one and then you can turn that interface on no shutdown. So you are basically creating a logical interface. Okay, this interface was not present earlier and you can verify that the interface has been created by using show IP interface brief command to check the list of the interfaces that you have. And you see the interface list starts from FA0 slash one and it goes all the way down to gigabit ethernet zero slash two. So you have 24 fast ethernet ports, you have two gigabit ethernet ports and you just created a virtual interface or a logical interface that is VLAN one. But there is no IP address that has been assigned to it so that we can like remotely access the device. So we'll just go again into the interface by using the configure terminal command and then we will use interface VLAN one command and then type down the IP address that needs to be configured followed by the subnet mask. So it's gonna be 192.168.1.1 along with the subnet mask of slash 25. And you're, you're all good to go. So we will again, now there's one more trick that you can use. If you want to use the show commands into the global config mode, because it's, it's not really a good idea to jump back to the enable mode and then again switch to the config mode again and again, because it, it kind of wastes your time and it's, it's, it's frustrating as well. So you can just add do before using the show command, okay, uh, into the global config mode. So you can just say do show IP interface brief and the same command can be executed as just the show command into the user mode sorry the enable mode and you there you go it just gives you all the link uh, it just gives you all the list of the interfaces that you have you see the VLAN one has been configured with 192.1601.1 IP address now that's that's so far done for configuring the IP address on a, on, a, on a logical interface on a switch so that the switch can be managed by using an IP address. Okay, but we have not created any uh, telnet session on the switch that can be like initiated by the PC because PC this PC and the switches virtual interface for VLAN one needs to be into same network. Now we have assigned 192.168.1.1 on this interface. And the PC carries 192.168.1.2 over here. So they both are into the same network. But the Telnet reachability, so Telnet is basically a protocol for remotely managing the, uh, the devices that you want to manage. So you can just jump into the CLI again and you can just type down another command called line VTY 0 space 4. So just like console line, this is another VTY line for, for remote sessions and VTY stands for virtual terminal yard. Okay, so you can see that and, and also these numbers indicates that you can have five connections, five telnet sessions at one time. Okay, so it, it starts from zero and you can go to zero, one, two, three and four, which, which, is, which are equal to five sessions and you can take this till 15 so you can have at least 16 sessions at one time that can be initiated but we'll just go with the four option that that's pretty often that everyone uses so we'll just use line vty0 space 4 and then we again need to configure the password just like we did on the console line so we'll say cisco 4 and then we will say login and that just gives us the ability to access the switch uh, by using a protocol called telnet Okay, so we'll just take an exit from the config mode and then we will now jump into the PC and then we will take an access of the command prompt of the PC and over here we will try to type a command called telnet space the IP address that you can use 192.168.1.1 uh, that's basically the IP address of the switch and as I hit enter it tries to reach out to the IP address of the switch which is 192.168.1.1 it says connection timed out remote host not responding okay first we need to check if we have the IP address configured on the device 
yeah that's basically the problem so we have not created so we have not configured an IP address on the device and that can be 192.168.1.2 because 1.1 1 .1 is already taken by by the virtual interface of the switch which is which is an SVI switched virtual interface so if we close down this thing again and then go to the command prompt and again type down the command telnet space 192.168.1.1 and it just tries and you see it says the connection is open and it asks for the user access verification so the so the password is going to be cisco4 i have typed down the password and as i hit enter it says okay wrong password cisco3 cisco4 all right we'll need to check what password we have configured that is Cisco space for I forgot to use the space bar between them all right so we'll just go back again and try to initiate the telnet connection again by typing now Cisco space for and there you go you are into the user mode of the switch so it can either ask the console password if you're going the physical way or it can ask the uh, remote password if you are going by the uh, remote way okay and then there's just one thing that you need to always remember that without enable password configured you cannot use the telnet connection okay in order to get access to the cli so enable password is basically a must for for having being able to uh, configure the device by using a remote connection so I'll, I'll jump into the enable mode and it asks for another password and then cisco Two, I guess is the password now Cisco 3 is the password yeah and then I can go to config T and do whatever I want so that's that's exactly how you manage the device by using the telnet the remote connectivity with it so that's exactly what we had to discuss about how you can manage the devices by using either physical way or remote way and how you can secure the passwords that you have there's one that there's one more thing that if you check the running configuration then I, I can just run show running and you see the the secret password is however hashed by using some md5 algorithm but if you go and check your console password and vty password are still shown into into like uh, a plain text and which we do not really want them to be to be prompted into plain text because if somebody gets to access the running configuration then they can clearly see that what passwords are, are being used so in order to again secure these passwords there is just one command that you can use and the command is service oh it can be entered into configure terminal mode so the command is service space password hyphen encryption and by using these commands all your passwords will again be encrypted okay and then if we check the command running configure again then you see our plain text password is encrypted and our console password again is encrypted along with the VTY password so that's how you can secure the CLI as well so in this video we discussed about how you can manage the switch and how you can use IP network by using an SVI to remotely manage the CLI and how you can secure the CLI so that's been all for this particular video I hope you enjoyed the content of the video and I'd like to thank you for viewing